Hey, we're back with Peter Schweitzer, president of the Government Accountability Institute and author of Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich, Helping China Win, and also perhaps my favorite, Profiles in Corruption. I'm so glad I got to read that just before Kamala Harris was announced as the nominee. Peter, welcome back. Great to be with you, Greg, as always. Thanks for having me. So uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband in trouble, Paul, well, I guess we know he's going to jail. Did you see the arrest, uh, the uh, the body cam footage yet? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, and, you know, Greg, it's, it's, it's really shocking to me uh, because let's remember what happened here. Uh, he caused an accident. He was intoxicated. There was somebody apparently injured uh, in this incident. According to California law, I'm not a lawyer, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, that constitutes felony DWI. Uh, but he was not charged with a felony DWI. He was charged with two misdemeanors. Um, and that's all you need to know about justice in America today. There's a certain set of rules uh, for the powerful and the well-connected. And for the rest of us, well, those rules don't apply. And Peter, you know, uh Paul Pelosi goes there uh, in the conversation you hear at the end. He's warming up to, you know, the whole do you know who I am routine. Take a look. Let's listen. Are you sure you could complete the test? Sure. Okay. Because I really don't want you to fall over and hurt yourself. That's the last thing I'll Right, but, but that, that defeats the, the whole purpose of the test, grabbing onto a pro car. Are you willing to do the breathalyzer test? Right. No, I, I understand you want to go home. You're involved in a crash. Right. I smell alcohol coming from your breath. I can see you're very unsteady on your feet. Right. No, I, I understand who you are. Oh, I'm a high profile person. Give me uh, special perks. Uh, what a mis I mean, there it is. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, exactly, Greg. I mean, the other thing he apparently did was uh, he's the member of some California Highway Patrol Association, uh, and he actually pulled out the card uh, and, and tried to use that as well. Um, look, I mean, here's the reality. Uh, we should laugh at this because it is really kind of pathetic. But here's the problem, Greg. I mean, basically, a lot of politicians in Washington, including the Pelosi's, get a lot of passes on a lot of things. Uh, we've talked about insider trading on the stock market. Paul Pelosi's made some pretty amazing stock trades based on the fact that his wife was Speaker in the House. Nobody calls him out on that because he is Nancy Pelosi's husband. So uh, this is a small indication of a larger serious problem that we have in this country. Peter, could I get you on the Mar-a-Lago raid? I have a theory. Well, I guess other people share it. I mean, this is obviously to me a setup uh, by the swamp, uh, FBI, uh, General Services Administration, the National Archives, which had it out for Trump while he was president. Uh, the president himself did not leave with uh, those documents. I feel like this is this is a hit job by the swamp. I don't think it's going to work, but I do I do have a feeling that the National Archives was playing a game here during his presidency and now after his presidency. Yeah, it's really remarkable, Greg. I mean, look, um, issues like this uh, come up sometimes when you're talking about the transference of documents uh, before uh, the transition to power. Um, somebody else comes into the presidency and whatnot. And we certainly have had experiences with Hillary Clinton's uh, laptop. Remember, there were top secret documents uh, on that uh, laptop and on the server that she had set up that was not authorized. The FBI also concluded, by the way, that that server was penetrated by at least one foreign intelligence agency. Um, there's a clear example where she went out of her way uh, to um, have documents in a unofficial, insecure uh, capacity. And what did we hear from the FBI? James Comey said, well, we can't prove that it was her intention, <laughs> even though that doesn't say the law. So, again, you're seeing an unequal uh, uh, you know, uh, application of justice here. It, clearly, there were indications that the Trump team was cooperating with the archives and with the Department of Justice on these documents. It's just a massive overreach, and it reeks of a political operation. Peter Schweitzer, when's your next book coming out? Can you tell us what it's about? 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I can't, Greg, but I'd love to come back. I'm working on it right now. It's it's going to be another 18 months before it comes out, but I would love to come back even before then uh, <laughs> and talk to you about other things. I always enjoy being with you. All right. Well, we appreciate it. Your books are phenomenal, and uh, we appreciate it so much. Peter Schweitzer, and uh, check it out, uh, Red Handed, if you can, and also my other favorite, Profiles in Corruption, and there are several others. To be continued, Peter Schweitzer, and we'll be right back.